You know, there's been a lot of talk recently about UFOs, so I took the opportunity to go look about in the sky. While I had no luck finding the mothership, it dawned on me that I could put together a video that discusses motherboards, specifically for the purpose of mining. So join me as I share my experience with the boards as I came up through the ranks. I'm not going to get so much into the detailed specifications, but share a casual approach to my experience. Have you ever heard the saying, learn by doing? I think it's a perfect adage that describes one's experience in mining. And it's one that we can all probably relate to. During a bear market, many have said it's perhaps the best time to invest into our operations, restructuring, and preparing for the next upswing. I agree with that sentiment. Finding equipment is no longer a problem, and prices have come down, allowing us to hunt for the best deals. I'm going to start the discussion with the traditional motherboard that is found in the common desktop computer, simply because that's how I got started. It was out of curiosity that led me to mining, so for me, it was a matter of using what I already had. In my case, two workstations that were using the AMD platform. Knowing the computers had full-size ATX motherboards, I knew that adding a second GPU to each one was an option, and quickly I doubled my capacity. It didn't take long for me to get the itch, where I wanted to expand my limited operation, so I chose to build my first open-air rig. At this time, pricing on nearly everything was going up, including motherboards, and some were simply too expensive. With a limited budget, I started looking at the used market. My experience thus far was limited so I stuck with what I knew from building my workstations. This led to purchasing a motherboard from the AM3 generation of chips from AMD. Good, bad, or indifferent, that allowed me to successfully build my first rig. So what did I learn? Nearly any motherboard with PCIe slots will work. Buying used allowed for a lower cost of entry, and perhaps most importantly, I proved to myself that I could do it. Unfortunately, in due process, I quickly came to realize the limitations of the technology or the downside of having chosen the AMD platform. At best, I was only able to get five GPUs to be recognized with an AM3 motherboard. This limited the number of GPUs I was able to run and led me to building a second and third rig with the same limitations. GPU density became an issue. We'll speak to this topic some more a bit later. If you already have some used equipment to repurpose, then yes, using such to build a rig is a viable option. However, from my experience, don't purchase it exclusively for mining. In today's market, there are better considerations that will allow for more opportunity and less frustration. Let's move on, and I suppose that puts us into the category of motherboards that are designed for the purpose of mining. For example, the ASRock H110 Pro. This is a board that allows for up to 13 GPUs and in many cases lends itself to a much easier configuration. Because of the price of this board during the bull run, I never purchased one until now. For this video, I picked up one for $19 and that included the CPU and cooler. I thought it would serve as a perfect example of buying gear in today's bear market. The biggest benefit of this board is its ability to host 13 GPUs. How one places that many cards is a question for another day, but having that as an option is greatly appreciated. I will point out one feature that I don't like about the H110 Pro, and that is the spacing between the PCIe by one slots. Minimal amount of space is afforded to the adapter card, and if touched, could create a short and make the rig unstable. Note that ASUS also makes a board with a B250 chipset. Competition is good, but both ASRock and ASUS, once sold new, will always demand a premium price, and frankly, that's a reason to look at other options, including the unbranded Chinese boards. If you spend enough time browsing the internet, 
you'll notice that much of the components that support our mining builds are rebranded components most likely coming from the same small number of manufacturers. From here, I'm going to share two motherboards that I'm currently using. First, I'll start with the BTC37 board. Often this board can be found in one of three variations, and they will look very similar to the boards found in the bigger server cases. Often, they will be referred to as riserless motherboards, and I believe the biggest difference between them is the amount of spacing between the PCIe slots. I have chosen the S variation that is easily identified by the blue PCIe slots. The board comes with a CPU installed and only needs to have memory and storage added to get going. The board does not require a 24-pin ATX power supply connection, but allows for a 6-pin connection from my breakout board and server power supply. I also want to note that I operate several of these boards and I have never had to make a BIOS change. For me, they introduced a very much plug and play experience. I have chosen to pair this motherboard with an 8 GPU open air mining frame where it fits very nicely. Notice that in this configuration, no riser is being used allowing me to reduce the cost of the build. The downside to this setup though is that the GPU's positioning will be mandated by the motherboard. This could lead to some cards coming close together or limit the number of cards that can be installed. In that case, using smaller GPUs will be most ideal. But if needed, one can mount the board differently and by using the common riser strategy, have more say in how cards are placed on a frame. In the interest of card density, know that you're not limited to only 8 GPUs. With the use of a 1 to 4 PCIe expansion card, we can expand the rig from 8 GPUs to 11. These small boards can often be found for less than $20 and is an inexpensive addition. The last board I want to speak to is the B75 mining board. The board is the perfect example of the unbranded, generic motherboards that can be found from a variety of distributors. When I first discovered the B75, it came with a CPU and cooler at the cost of $75, which I thought was a pretty good value. The board uses the older DDR3 memory, which is less expensive, or maybe you already have some to repurpose. The B75 delivers another plug-and-play experience with its use of USB inputs, supporting up to 8 GPUs in a small form factor. I like the fact that they eliminate the use of the PCIe adapter card, which is one less component to deal with. The board also provides the option to be powered by the 24-pin ATX power connector, or with a pair of 6-pin connectors, and having this option allows for flexibility and is appreciated. When using Rave OS, I've also found that the number assigned to the USB port stays true in the software, which helps identify GPUs. One downside to the board is, ironically, the thing I like about it. The USB inserts do not allow for the option to use the PCIe expansion cards previously mentioned. As I start to wrap up the video, I'll speak to the B250 motherboards that are on the market. One that's popular is the ASUS B250 Mining Expert, which allows for up to 19 GPUs. Unfortunately, I don't have one to share with you, but there is no denying that the option to host 19 cards on a single motherboard is awesome. In preparation to this video, I noticed as of recently, a wave of new motherboards are becoming available on eBay. I can't help but think there may not be a place for a premium ASRock or ASUS board in the marketplace if these generic boards do the job well enough. While it's a small amount compared to the actual GPUs, we have to remember that every motherboard is using a percentage of the available power. At some point, it will be realized that efficient planning, which includes our motherboard decisions, will influence the maximum number of GPUs that can be operated within our farms. Post-merge, this is where a lot of my attention has gone, allowing me to take everything that I have experienced and improve upon the yield, 
the card density, and overall efficiency. It's fair to say that when it comes to the topic of motherboards, we have a wide selection to choose from. Some are better than others, but I think one goal that we should all share is to find the board at a price that gives the greatest value. I'll conclude with a brief summary, and that is simply this. When building out our infrastructure, don't only think about what you need today, but more importantly, what do you need tomorrow, in six months, perhaps in the next bull market. If you allow yourself a $100 budget, and that allows you to purchase a motherboard, the supporting CPU, cooler, and RAM, then get the board that supports the most GPUs. Maybe you won't use all the capacity on day one, but it will be there when you need it. In any case, that will do it for this video. Hopefully you were introduced to something that was helpful. If so, a hit on the like button is appreciated. It's always great to see new subscribers, so please consider doing so. Be mindful of your uptime, and thanks for watching.